Hello everyone. Uh, in this session, let us understand the supply chain performance measures. And uh, there are several performance measuring drivers. Uh, we'll discuss all those things in uh, detail. Uh, before proceeding to the drivers, let us uh, understand the difference between responsiveness and efficiency. Uh, efficiency actually uh, describes uh, best of business practices uh, across the world and efficient production means uh, making products without wasting materials or natural resources or even manners efficient facility management is uh, one of the requirement for all the industries because efficiency saves money and increases profit through the business. But an efficient supply chain can be uh, beneficial to you know all the components of the business system. Uh, efficient supply chain gets your product to their destination in the most cost effective way. Uh, especially uh, in today's global marketplace this is very much uh, you know essential your supply chain costs are major part of your overhead which are expressed in the prices you ultimately offer to your customers if if your supply chain adds unnecessary expenses to your end products then your ability to successfully complete uh, or uh, compete with other companies offering the same products is uh, effectively hobbled. So it's as simple as that. If your competitors have more efficient uh, supply chains than you, they will be able to offer the same products for less. So therefore, efficiency of the supply chain uh, depends upon factors like optimization uh, quality high quality okay uh, high quality and inventory management and uh, customer satisfaction uh, when it comes to responsiveness responsiveness uh, supply chain actually uh, how uh, the company responds uh, to the customer needs okay? and uh, uh, it it has two it has to do two things uh, one is uh, it has to be responsive to your needs and it has to be responsive to the needs of your customers so these uh, this responsiveness is uh, definitely depends upon uh, you know accuracy order fulfillment accuracy how quickly and how uh, effectively you uh, fulfill the customer order then uh, scalable fulfillment in case if uh, any of the a production volume has to be increased within what less time how come you can do that scalable you know uh, fulfillments then communication how quickly you communicate with the customer and uh, get the feedback or grievances everything and how quickly you respond to them uh, then customer satisfaction so these are the few uh, factors which affects the responsiveness of uh, the system so Supply chain uh, performance uh, in terms of responsiveness and efficiency uh, is based on uh, interaction between logistical and cross functional drivers. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, there are several uh, responses performance measure drivers uh, out of which uh, the facility is uh, one important uh, driver uh, let us discuss about the role of uh, facilities play in the supply chain uh, as well as uh, critical facility related uh, decisions that supply chain managers need to make 
if you talk about role in supply chain, uh, if you think inventory as what is being uh, passed along the supply chain and uh, transportation as uh, how it is passed along, then facilities are the where of the supply chain. They are the locations uh, to or uh, from which the inventory is transported. Within facility, inventory is either transformed into another state uh, that is manufacturing state or it is uh, stored, uh, something like warehousing. Uh, then the the facilities, the role of facilities in, uh, if you look at the competitive strategy, then uh, facilities are the you know key driver of supply chain performance in terms of responsiveness and uh, efficiency uh, that what we have discussed just now uh, for example uh, companies can gain economies of scale when a product is manufactured or stored uh, in only one location this centralization increases uh, efficiency the cost reduction however comes at the expenses of responsiveness as many of companies customers may be uh, located far from the production facility the opposite uh, side is also true locating facilities close to customer customers increases uh, the number of facilities needed and uh, and consequently uh, reduces the efficiency if the customer demands and is willing to pay for the responsiveness uh, that having numerous facilities adds however uh, this facilities decision helps uh, meeting the company's competitive strategic uh, goals for example if you take uh, toyota and uh, honda both toyota and honda uh, use uh, facilities decisions to be more responsive to their customers these uh, companies uh, have uh, an end goal of opening manufacturing facilities in every major market that they enter uh, while there are other benefits to opening local facilities such as protection from currency fluctuation and uh, trade barriers uh, the increase in responsiveness play a large role in toyota and uh, honda's uh, decision to place facilities in their local market uh, now if you look at the uh, components of uh, facility uh, decisions uh, the decisions uh, you know regarding facilities are a uh, very crucial part of supply chain design as we know uh, identifying the components of facility decision uh, that uh, companies must analyze uh, first role uh, for production facilities uh, firms must decide whether they will be flexible dedicated or a combination of both flexible capacity can be used for many types of uh, products but is often less efficient whereas dedicated capacity can be used for only a limited number of uh, products but is more efficient Firms must also decide whether to design a facility with a product focus or functional focus. A product focused facility performs many different uh, functions, for example, fabrication and uh, assembly in uh, producing a single type of product. A functional focused uh, facility performs few functions, uh, only fabrication and uh, or assembly on many types of products okay a, a product focus tends to result in more expertise about a particular type of product at expense of functional expertise uh, that comes from a functional methodology uh, next uh, we have to look at the location also deciding where a company will locate its facility uh, is a larger part of the design of uh, supply chain a basic trade-off here is uh, whether to centralize in order to gain economies of scale or to decentralize to become more responsive by being close to the customer so companies must also consider a host of 
issues related to various characteristics of the local area in which a, a facility is located. Uh, this may include uh, macroeconomic factors or quality of workers or cost of workers or cost of facility, availability of infrastructure, uh, proximity to customers, uh, the location of the you know, company's facilities, uh, even even tax effects and uh, you know other uh, strategic uh, factors. So uh, while talking about capacity, uh, companies must also determine you know facilities capacity to perform its uh, intended functions or function. A large amount of excess capacity allows the facilities to be very flexible and to respond to wide swings uh, in the demands placed on it. Excess capacity, however, uh, costs money and therefore can decrease efficiency. A facility with uh, little excess capacity uh, will likely uh, to be more efficient per unit products it produces than uh, one with a lot of uh, unused capacity. The high utilization facility, uh, however, will have a difficulty responding to demand fluctuations. Therefore, a company must make a trade-off to determine the right amount of capacity to have at each of its uh, facilities. Uh, a manager, a company manager should track uh, the facility related, uh, you know, uh, matrix that influence uh, the supply chain performance such as capacity which measures the maximum amount of facility can process, uh, utilization which measures the fraction of capacity that is currently being used in the facility and uh, theoretical flow or cycle time of production which measures the time required to process a unit if there are absolutely no delay at any stage. Uh, actual average flow or cycle time which measures average actual time taken for all units processed over uh, you know specified duration such as week or month. Then uh, flow time efficiency uh, which measures it is actually the ratio of uh, theoretical flow time to actual average flow time. This is one of the you know uh, uh, matrix that influence supply chain performance. Then product variety which measures the number of products and uh, product families processed in a facility. Uh, processing cost and flow uh, times are likely to increase with the uh, product variety. Uh, then uh, volume contribution of uh, you know that is also uh, measures volume contribution uh, which measures the fraction of total volume processed by facility that comes from top 20 uh, percent of customers and uh, processing uh, idle time uh, which measures the fraction of time that uh, the facility uh, was processing uh, units uh, which being set up to process units unavailable because it was down and idle uh, because it had no units to process. Average production batch size which measures the average amount uh, produced in each production batch. Similarly, a production service level, production service level which measures the fraction of production orders uh, completed in uh, completed, uh, you know, in full and on time. So uh, this is about, uh, you know, facilities, uh, which is one of the important uh, performance measure driver in uh, supply chain management. Okay, next uh, we'll dis uh, discuss about uh, the second uh, uh, supply chain performance driver uh, that is inventory and uh, this role of uh, inventory uh, in supply chain uh, performance. Uh, inventory uh, exists in supply chain because of mismatch between uh, supply and demand.
this uh, mismatch is actually an intentional one uh, where it is economical to the manufacturer in uh, large lots that are uh, then stored for the future sales uh this this uh, you know uh, mismatch is also intentional at a retail store uh where inventory is held in anticipation of uh, future demand so uh, an important role that inventory plays in the supply chain is to increase the amount of demand that can be satisfied by having uh, uh, the product ready and uh, available when a customer wants it uh, another role <clears throat> and that is significant role that uh, inventory plays is to reduce the cost by uh, you know exploiting the economies of uh, scale that may exist uh, during the production and uh, distribution uh inventory is held uh, throughout the supply chain in the form of uh, raw materials uh, work in process and uh, finished goods inventory uh, is a major source of cost in a supply chain and has a huge impact on responsiveness of the company if we uh, think of uh, responsiveness spectrum uh, the location and quantity of uh, inventory can move the supply chain from uh, one end of the spectrum to the other uh, for example uh, an apparel supply chain with a high inventory you know levels at the retail stage has high level of responsiveness because a consumer can walk into a store and uh, walk out with a shirt uh, he or she was looking for uh, in contrast, uh, an apparel supply chain with little inventory uh, could be very uh, efficient but uh, would make customers to wait several weeks or even uh, months for their clothes. Uh, this inventory uh, also has a significant impact on uh, material flow time in supply chain. Uh, material flow time is the time that uh, elapses between the point at which material enters the supply chain to the point at which it exists. Uh, exits. Uh, for a supply chain uh, throughput, which is the rate at which the sales occur, uh, if inventory is represented by uh, say, uh, I take uh, uh, I. Uh, that is uh, say inventory is uh, i flow time is t okay flow time is t uh, then uh, say throughput and throughput is uh, say d throughput by d so then uh, this can be uh, these three things can be related uh, using equation i is equal to t and t so where i represents uh, inventory and uh, t represents the flow time and uh, d represents the uh, throughput uh, it's nothing but rate at which the sales occur uh, <clears throat> so this is one equation that you can uh, uh, use while calculating the inventories uh, if I look at one example, uh, if the flow time of an auto assembly process is uh, say 10 hours and uh, say throughput is 60 units an hour, uh, so this uh, law tells us that uh, this equation tells us that inventory is 16 to 10, that is 600 units. If you are able to reduce inventory to say 300 units uh, while uh, holding throughput constant, uh, we we would reduce our flow time to five hours, uh, that is 300 by 60. So here we have to note that uh, uh, inventory and throughput must have consistent uh, units. Okay. Uh, so logical conclusion here is that uh, inventory and flow time are uh, you know synonymous in supply chain because uh, throughput is often determined by customer demand. 
uh, company uh, managers should use actions that lower the amount of uh, inventory needed without increasing cost or uh, you know reducing responsiveness because uh, reduced flow time can be a significant uh, advantage in a supply chain so uh, if you look at the role of this inventory in competitive strategy uh, so it plays a important role in supply chains ability to support a firm's uh, you know strategy competitive strategy uh if a firm's competitive strategy requires a very high level of responsiveness a company can achieve this uh, responsiveness by uh, locating large amount of inventory close to the customers uh, conversely a company can also use inventory to become more efficient by reducing inventory uh, through centralized stocking the latter strategy would uh, support a competitive strategy of uh, being uh, low, low uh, i mean low cost producer uh, the trade off uh, implicit in the inventory driver is between the rep responsiveness that results from more inventory and efficiency that results from less inventory. Uh, if i have to tell some example for this uh, no this uh, Nordstrom's uh, you know competitive strategy target upper end customers with the high responsiveness requirements. Uh, this is uh, with respect to you know uh, strategy competitive strategy one of the competitive strategy that is called as Nord Nordstrom you know, competitive strategy. Uh, actually, uh, these customers are willing to pay a uh, premium to have uh, to have the products uh, they want when they want them. To support this competitive strategy, uh, Nordstrom uses inventory. The company stock a large variety of uh, variety and quantity of uh, products to ensure a high level of availability. In fact, uh, Nordstrom uh, stocks significantly larger amount of inventory than other department stores. Uh, Nordstrom, uh, you know, incurs higher cost because of its uh, large inventory, but it gains extra margin from its customer. Who are willing to pay for uh, a service that uh, Nordstrom's inventory makes possible? Uh, so uh, now let us understand the different components of uh, inventory decisions. Uh, so actually, as a uh, manager, company manager, it is very essential to identify the major inventory-related decisions. That supply chain manage uh, uh, supply chain manage management requires uh, in order to effectively create more responsive and uh, more efficient uh, supply chains. So the first component here is uh, uh, you know, cycle inventory. Cycle inventory is the average amount of inventory used to satisfy demand between receipts of supplier shipments. Uh, the size of cycle inventory is a result of production, transportation, or purchase of material in large lots. Uh, companies produce or purchasing in large lots to exploit uh, economies of scale in the production, transportation, uh, or purchasing process. With the increase in lot size, however, uh, it's also you know, comes an increase in uh, carrying costs. As an example of a cycle stock decision, when, uh, let us consider a book uh, retailer. Uh, retailers sale, you know, retailers, uh, you know, sales average around 10 truckloads of uh, books a month. Okay, the cycle inventory decisions the retailer must make are how much to order for replenishment and how often to place these orders okay the e-retailer could order 10 truckloads once each month or it could order one truckload every three days the basic trade of supply chain managers face uh, is the cost of holding larger lots of inventory uh, that is when cycle inventory is high uh, this versus cost of ordering product frequently when uh, cycle inventory is so coming to the uh, you know, uh, next component we have uh, safety inventory 
safety inventory actually is a is a inventory held in case demand exceeds uh, you know expectations it is held to counter uncertainty if the the world uh, were you know perfectly predictable only cycle inventory would be needed because uh, demand is uncertain and may exceed expectations uh, but companies hold safety inventory to satisfy an uh, unexpectedly high demand uh, actually uh, this company managers face a key decision when uh, determining how much safety inventory to hold for example a toy retailer uh, such as uh, you know toys are uh, they must calculate its a safety inventory for the holiday buying season if it is if uh, you know if it, it has to much safe uh, <clears throat> safety inventory toys go unsold and may have to be discounted discounted after you know uh, the holidays if the company has too little safety inventory however uh, this this toys you know lose sales along with the margin those sales should have brought therefore uh, choosing safety inventory involves uh, making a trade off between the cost of having too much inventory and cost of losing sales due to not having enough inventory then uh, we have we can take the seasonal inventory as a third component uh, seasonal inventory is built up to counter predictable variability in demand companies using seasonal inventories uh, build up inventory in uh, periods of uh, low demand and uh, store it for uh, periods of high demand when they will not have uh, the capacity to produce all that is demanded uh, so company managers face again a key decision in determining whether to build a seasonal inventory and if they do build it in deciding how much to build if a company can rapidly change the rate of its production system at a very low cost then it may not need seasonal inventory because the production system can adjust to a period of uh, uh, high demand without incurring large costs uh, but if changing the rate of production is expensive uh, when worker must be hired or fired then then company would be you know would uh, would be wise to establish a uh, smooth production uh, and build up uh, its inventory during periods of loading therefore the basic trade of supply chain managers face in determining how much seasonal inventory to build uh, is cost of carrying you know additional seasonal inventory versus cost of having a more flexible production rate so uh, we can think of us uh, no next uh, component of inventory additions may be a level of uh, product availability this level of uh, product availability is uh, the fraction of demand that is uh, served on time from product held in held in the inventory a high level of uh, product availability provides a high level of responsiveness but the increase cost increases the cost because a lot of uh, inventory is uh, held but rarely used uh, in contrast to this a low level of uh, product availability lowers uh, inventory holding cost but results in a higher fraction of customers who are not served on time uh, so here the basic trade off when determining the level of product availability is between cost of inventory to increase product availability and the loss from not serving customers on time so uh, as we already uh, discussed about uh, you know facility related matrix in the previous uh, you know discussions so if if you take the same uh, you know inventory related matrix then a manager should track uh, certain inventory related metrics uh, that influence supply chain performance maybe average inventory uh, which measures the average amount of uh, inventory carried okay uh, actually average inventory should be measured in uh, in, in units day of demand and uh, financial value then uh, uh, products with uh, more than a specified number of days of inventory 
which identifies the products for which the perm is carrying a high level of inventory. This metric can be used to identify uh, products uh, that are in oversupply or identify reasons that justify the high inventory, such as price discounts or being very slow uh, mover. Then uh, uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, the next metrics may be average replenishment batch size, which which measures the average amount in each replenishment order. Replenishment order. The batch size uh, should be measured by, uh, you know, in terms of both the units and the days of demand. It can be estimated by average, uh, that is, uh, averaging over time the difference between maximum and minimum uh, inventories. Uh, so next, uh, you know, in inventory related metrics uh, will be average uh, safety inventory, which measures average amount of inventory on hand when uh, replenishment order arrives. Uh, average safety inventory should be measured in both uh, you know, uh, you know, units and days of demand. It can be estimated by averaging uh, over time the minimum inventory on hand in each uh, uh, replenishment cycle. Then uh, one more is that uh, fill rate. Fill rate uh, measures the fraction of orders. Uh, that means demand that were met on time from the inventory. So these are the few, uh, you, know, you know, inventory related matrix, uh, which is uh, definitely going to influence the supply chain performance. So let us uh, take the next uh, <coughs> performance, uh, supply chain performance uh, measuring driver. Uh, that is, uh, transportation uh, so the role of uh, transportation in supply chain uh, is uh, very very important uh, so let us discuss about uh, you know uh, key transportation related decisions that supply chain managers can make uh, so first let us understand the role of uh, this transportation in the supply chain Actually, uh, transportation moves uh, product uh, between different stages in supply chain. Uh, like uh, the other supply chain drivers, transportation has a large impact on both the responsiveness and uh, efficiency. Faster transportation allows a supply chain to be more responsive but uh, reduces its efficiency. The type of transportation a company uses also affects the inventory and uh, facility location in the supply chain. Uh, uh, Dell, for example, files some uh, components from Asia because uh, you know doing so uh, it allows the companies to you know lower level of inventory it holds. Clearly, uh, such a practice also increases responsiveness but uh, decreases transportation. Efficiency, uh, no, uh, transport, you know, it actually decreases transportation efficiency itself because it's more uh, costly than uh, importing parts uh, by ship. Uh, <clears throat> then, uh, if you look at the role of this transportation in the competitive strategy, uh, actually, it is. Uh, it is actually it is prominently in the company's consideration. Uh, for the targets that customer needs, uh, if the if the company's competitive strategy targets a customer who demands a very high level of uh, responsiveness, and uh, that customer is willing to pay for his uh, you know responsiveness, then the, then company can use transportation as one of the driver for making a supply chain more responsive. Uh, the oppose, you know, in 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 case, you know, opposite uh, thing is also, you know, true. If a company's competitive strategy, you know, targets customer whose uh, main decision criteria is price, then company can use transportation to lower the cost of product at the expense of responsiveness, because a company may use both inventory and uh, transportation uh, to increase responsiveness or efficiency. 
the optimal decision uh, for the company often means uh, finding the right balance between these uh, two okay um uh, so let us uh, now uh, discuss about uh, the components of uh, transportation decisions so uh, we have to identify the key components of transportation that uh, companies you no know, companies must analyze when designing and operating a supply chain uh, so in that we can uh, think of or we can talk about uh, design of uh, transportation network so transportation network is an, is is nothing but a collection of transportation modes locations and uh, routes along which the product can be shipped a company must decide whether the transportation from supply source will be direct to demand point or will go through intermediate uh, you know consolidation points uh, these you know design decisions also include whether uh, multiple supply or demand points will be included in the single run or uh, not uh, finally uh, companies must also decide on the set of uh, transportation modes that will be used so the next component uh, could be a choice of transportation mode uh, because the mode of transportation is the manner in which the product is moved from one location in the supply chain network to another uh, companies can choose uh, between uh, air or truck or rail or sea and you know uh, pipeline as mode of uh, transport for products uh today uh, information goods can also be sent uh, through internet okay each mode has uh, different uh, characteristics uh, with respect to the speed size and uh, you know uh, and uh, uh, you know individual parcels so uh, <clears throat> cost of shipping and flexibility that uh, lead companies to choose one particular you know that that is uh, you know depend upon depend upon the company uh, uh, to decide uh, which particular mode they are referring for uh, then uh, if you look at the you know a transportation related matrix the way how we have uh, discussed the inventory and facility related matrix uh, so there are few uh, you know uh, transportation related matrix Uh, maybe uh, uh, average inbound transportation cost uh, which measures the cost of uh, bringing the product into a facility uh, as a percentage of sales or cost of goods sold uh, this cost should be measured per unit uh, you know uh, brought in uh, but uh, this can be a difficult one uh, the inbound transportation cost is generally uh, uh it is uh, included in uh, that is cost of goods sold uh it is uh, always useful to separate this cost by the supplier then uh, average incoming shipment size which measures the average number of uh, units or dollars in each incoming shipment at a facility then uh, average outbound transportation cost which measures the cost of uh, sending product out of facility to the customer uh, again this this uh, cost should be measured per unit shipped but it is often measured as a percentage of sales uh, it is useful to separate this matrix by the customer uh, then coming to uh, the i think uh, the last one that is the fraction of transported transported by mode which measures the fraction of uh, transportation using each mode of transportation this metric can be used to estimate uh, if certain modes are overused or underutilized so uh, next uh, let us uh, go to the next mode of uh, that is a supply chain performance measuring driver that is information so let us discuss the role that uh, information plays in supply chain 
as well as key information related uh, you know decisions that supply chain managers can do uh, so if you look at the role of the supply you know information in supply chain uh, information you know you know it affects every part of the supply chain its impact is easy to under, underestimate as information affects a supply chain in many you know different ways uh, information serves as the connection between various uh, stages of supply chain uh, which allows them to coordinate and maximize the total supply chain profitability uh, information is also crucial uh, to the daily operations of each stage in supply chain for instance a production uh, scheduling system uses information on demand to create a schedule that uh, allows a factory to produce the right products in an efficient manner uh, warehouse management uh, system you know if you take warehouse management system uses information to create uh, visibility of the warehouse inventory uh, this com the company can then use this information to determine whether uh, new orders can be uh, filled or not uh, so if, if you look at the role of this uh, information in the competitive strategy uh, of course information is a very important driver that companies have to you know they have used to become both uh, more efficient and more responsive uh, the tremendous growth of uh, information technology is uh, you know it is one of the testimony to impact the you know impact uh, that information can have on improving a company's prospects like all other uh, drivers uh, even with information companies reach a point when they must make the trade off uh, between efficiency and uh, responsiveness so uh, uh, another decision you know, key decision involves uh, what information is most valuable in reducing cost and uh, improving responsiveness within uh, you know given supply chain this uh, decision will vary you know depending on the supply chain structure and uh, market segment uh, that are served uh, some companies uh, you know they target customers who require customized uh, you know products that carry uh, premium price uh, tags uh, these companies might find that uh, investment <coughs> in uh, information allow them to respond more quickly to their customers. Uh, for example, uh, you know this uh, one of the you know manufacturing that is Anderson uh, Windows. Uh, is a major manufacturer of uh, residential wood windows, uh, which is located in uh, you know, uh, so it is in uh, uh, Minnesota. Uh, that is Bayport. Uh, they have investigated uh, in uh, information system that enables the company to bring customized products to the market uh, you know, rapidly. Uh, the system called Window of Knowledge which uh, allows the distributors and customers to design uh, windows to uh, custom fit their needs users can select uh, from library over 50000 you know components that can be combined in any number of ways uh, the, the this particular system immediately gives the you know, customer price quotes and automatically sends the order to the factory if the if the customer decides to buy this in information investment not only gives the customer a much wider variety of products it allows you know anderson to be uh, much more responsive to the customer as uh, it gets the customer's order to the factory as soon as the order is uh, placed uh if you take the dell as an example for this then uh, you know dell takes the order directly from the customer over the phone and uh, through the internet 
so uh, like building this uh, direct uh, channel uh, required an uh, investment because of uh, added functions uh, which dell must perform a large part of the cost can be attributed to information with the direct channel model however uh, dell is able to view the actual consumer demand much sooner than most pc manufacturers therefore a company can respond more quickly to the changes in customer needs uh, even dell dell can uh, you know uh, modify its product offerings to meet uh, these new needs uh, dell is not the low cost provider but the company is uh, you know however cheapest for its level of responsiveness and uh, a large part of its uh, you know its responsiveness is due to information flow between uh, uh, dell and its uh, customers so uh, this is uh, these are the few examples uh, which we can uh, relate uh, to the information as the driver then uh, let us understand the different components of uh, you know information uh, decisions uh so one of the components may be push versus uh, pull okay uh when when designing the process of supply chain managers uh, must determine whether this these processes are part of push or pull phase in the chain uh which we have already discussed okay uh, about the push and uh, pull phase in our previous uh, you know discussions uh <clears throat> actually a uh, push system uh, generally requires information in the form of uh, elaborate material requirement planning uh, you know uh, which take a master production schedule and roll it back uh, creating schedules for suppliers with uh, part types quantities and uh, delivery dates so all these you know in, they have to do the scheduling for this pull system requires information on actual demand to be transmitted extremely quickly throughout uh, the entire chain so that uh, the production and distribution of uh, products may you know, reflect the uh, real demand uh, you know very accurately uh, so so if you look at uh, the if you want to know uh, one more component that is uh, forecasting and uh, you know uh, even even coordination and information sharing is also one of the components okay of the uh, information decisions uh, this coordination you know supply chain coordination actually occurs when all stages of uh, supply chain work towards the objective of uh, maximizing the total supply chain profitability uh, based on shared information lack of uh, coordination can uh, you know result in significant loss of uh, supply chain profit uh, coordination among different stages in supply chain requires each stage to share appropriate information with other stages for example if the supplier is to produce a, a produce the right parts in the, in a timely manner for a manufacturer in a full system Uh, the manufacturer must share the uh, you know demand and uh, production information with the supplier uh, this information sharing is thus very crucial to the success of the you know supply chain okay uh, so then comes forecasting forecasting is art and you uh, know science of uh, you know making projections about what future demand and uh, conditions will be obtaining forecasting information frequently uh, means using uh, sophisticated techniques to estimate uh, future sales or market conditions so managers you know company managers must decide how they will make the forecasts and uh, to what extent they will rely on forecasts to make uh, you know proper uh, decisions uh so even even companies you know often they use forecasts uh, both on you know uh you know tactical levels to schedule production and uh, on uh, strategic uh, uh level to determine whether to build uh you know a new plants or even whether to enter into a new market or something like that once a company creates a forecast a company needs to plan uh, to act on this forecast okay uh 
actually there is one term which i have to use here aggregate planning uh, which transforms forecasts into plan of activity to satisfy the projected uh, demand okay uh, uh, you know a key decision you know manager face he is how to collaborate on uh, aggregate planning throughout the entire supply chain okay and uh, you know at this aggregate uh, plan becomes uh, critical you know information uh, which is to be shared across supply chain because it affects both the demand on demand on a firm supplies suppliers and uh, supply to its uh, customers so uh, there are many you know uh, technologies which enable the sharing of informations and uh, for that uh, we we'll, can take the example of electronic you know data interchange uh, which uh, you know uh, allows companies to place uh, instantaneous and uh, you know preparedness purchase orders with uh, suppliers electronic data interchange edi is not only efficient it also decreases the time needed to get products to customers because uh, transactions are faster and uh, more accurate than uh, when they are paper based uh, uh, though this uh, edi is uh, you know a bit outdated and has a limited uh, you know capabilities it still offer efficiency and uh, responsiveness for some companies and then uh, internet uh, you know uh, has a critical advantage over uh, you know edi that is electronic data interchange with respect to information sharing uh, because the internet conveys much more information and uh, therefore offers much more visibility than uh, your edi so better visibility improves the decision across the supply chain so internet communication among the stages uh, in the supply chain is also easier because a standard infrastructure that is a, you know what is called world wide web www which is already you know exists so really we have to thank to internet and e-commerce which has become the major force in the you know supply chain uh, then we can think of one more technology that is e erp that is enterprise resource planning it's a, it's a erp system which provides uh, you know transactional and tracking transactional you know tracking and global visibility of information from within a company and uh, across uh, its supply chain this uh, this kind of real time information uh, helps uh, supply chain to improve the quality of uh, the you know quality of its uh, operational decisions uh, actually erp system keeps the track of uh, information uh, whereas internet provide the uh, only method which uh, which uh, we can view the information uh, so uh, then uh, supply chain management uh, software uh, uses the information in erp system to provide uh, you know, analytical decision support in addition to visibility of uh, information erp systems show the company what is going on while uh, supply chain management system help a company uh, decide what it should do uh, so even we have one more technology that is uh, radio frequency identification that is rfid uh, which consists of an uh, active or passive radio frequency you know, applied to the item which is being tracked and uh, you know, and uh, there, there are something called as a reader and emitter or something like that a passive tag draws energy from the reader whereas uh, an active tag has its own battery and uh, draws the power from there so actually uh, this walmart company has uh, used this particular technology for its top 100 suppliers okay. and uh, this rfid radio frequency identification uh, has many you know uses potential uses can be used in manufacturing to check availability of the entire bills of material and this technology can be you know can make uh, the receiving of truck much faster and cheaper 
uh, you know, full implementation of uh, actually this RFID would eliminate the need for manual counting. And even you can see the barcode scanning at uh, receiving you no know, uh, doc. Uh, it can also be used uh, to get an exact count of incoming items and uh, items in storage. So RFID technology is, uh, however, uh, has uh, you know is of course it is uh, reaching hundred you know reaching people with hundred percent accuracy, and its cost per unit is still very you know not that high. Uh, to make the global acceptance uh, difficult even at uh, this, okay, this particular level. Then if you look at the information related you know, matrix uh, which influences the supply chain performance here we have something uh, called as forecast uh, reason uh, which is nothing but uh, which, which actually identifies how far in advance of actual event a uh, forecast is made. Then, uh, then we have something called as forecast error, which measures the difference between forecast and actual demand. Then uh, seasonal factors, which measures the extent to which the average demand in a season is above or below the average in the year. Then, uh, then we can have a ratio of demand variability to order variability, which measures the standard deviation of uh, incoming demand and uh, supply order placed uh, so these are the uh, few you know uh, information related matrix okay so next uh, uh, we will take uh, the next driver that is uh, sourcing uh, sourcing you know uh, let us understand the role of uh, you know sourcing or outsourcing in the supply chain actually uh, sourcing is a set of business process uh, required to purchase goods and services uh, so through sourcing you can uh, purchase you know uh, goods and services from uh, you know, uh, outside suppliers okay so managers must uh, decide which tasks uh, need to be outsourced and uh, uh, those that will be performed within the company so that is what we call in-house uh, activity for each uh, you know, outsourced task the manager must decide whether to source from the single supplier or a portfolio of suppliers if a portfolio of uh, multiple suppliers is to be carried then uh, the role of each supplier in the you know in the in that in the portfolio must be clarified so this and the next step is to identify the set of uh, criteria that will be used to select the supplier and uh, measure their uh, performance Uh, the company managers uh, you know can then uh, select the suppliers and uh, negotiate contracts with uh, them uh, actually contracts uh, define the role of each supply source and uh, should be structured to improve supply chain performance and uh, actually it has to minimize the information you know distortion uh, uh, from one stage to the you know next stage once suppliers and uh, contracts are in place uh, procurement process you know process or processes that facilitate the you know, placement and delivery of the orders uh, you know becomes uh, uh, the next role or next major role so uh, the sourcing role in the if you look at this uh, role of sourcing in the competitive you know strategy uh, you know, uh, sourcing decisions are very crucial because they affect the level of, uh, you know, efficiency and responsiveness uh, the supply chain can achieve. Uh, in some instance, uh, the company, you know, outsource to responsive third party uh, if it is too expensive for them to develop their responsiveness on their own. Our exam, uh, you know, example is uh, you know outsourcing of uh, next day delivery by all firms to a few package carrier because it is too expensive for a firm to develop the next day delivery capability on its own next day next day delivery. 
uh, in other instances uh, you know companies uh, have kept the process you know in house to maintain control otherwise they lose control everything cannot be you know uh, outsourced so certain activities they have to keep it in house uh, so um, uh, for example you know you know cisco uh, so cisco has you know outsourced almost all of its uh, manufacturers manufacturing uh, it uh, does however uh, uh, sourcing strategy that uh, varies by product type for low end products such as uh, you know routers for home networks uh cisco aims for efficiency these routers are uh, produced and packed in china and uh, shipped in uh, very bulk for sale in united states cisco aims for lowest uh, cost manufacturing location and uh, economies of scale in uh, transportation uh, that's why uh, they have targeted uh, you know uh, china market okay uh, so for a low cost for high end products in contrast you know cisco outsource to contract manufacturer in united states these manufacturers are not cheap but they are responsive and can uh, serve the rapidly evolving uh, needs of the you know high end market so this is what the strategy you know cisco uh, has developed over years then uh, if you look at the components of these uh, sourcing decisions uh so first one i have to tell you about in house uh, or outsource the most uh, you know significant uh, uh sourcing decision uh, for the firm is uh, whether to perform a task in house or outsource it to a third party this decision should be driven in part by its impact on the total supply chain profit it is the best to outsource if uh, the growth in the total supply chain profit is significant with a little additional risk uh, within a task such as transportation managers must decide whether to outsource all of it uh, outsource only the responsive component or outsource only the efficient component once again uh, the decision should be based on you know uh, growth in total supply chain profitability then uh, it also has something called uh, you know second uh, next component that we can you know list under this uh, sourcing is uh, you know suppliers uh, selection uh, so company managers must decide on the number of suppliers uh, they will have for a particular activity Uh, they must then identify the criteria along which uh, suppliers will be evaluated and uh, how they will be selected uh, for the selection process of course managers must decide whether they will use direct negotiations or you no know, resort to an auction uh, if an if an auction is used it must be structured you know uh, to ensure the desired outcome then uh, <clears throat> the third component that we can list under you know uh, list for sourcing decisions is procurement procurement actually it is a process uh, in which suppliers sends product in uh, response to the customer orders uh, managers you know must decide on structure of uh, procurement of the uh, direct as well as indirect materials and uh, strategic uh, as well as uh, general materials but in each case it is important to identify the critical mechanism for uh, increasing supply chain profits for example uh, if a firm should set up uh, procurement for direct materials to ensure uh, you know good coordination between supplier and buyer in contrast the procurement of uh, you know uh, products should be structured to ensure that the transaction costs are very low so uh, this is uh, you know this is one of the important uh, you know aspect of uh, you know sourcing then uh, coming to sourcing related matrix okay we have already discussed about uh, you know uh, different uh, you know matrix 
maybe facility related, inventory related, or information related, and now it is sourcing related matrix. Uh, so as is the duty of the manager to track the you know sourcing related matrix, which influence the you know supply chain performance. Uh, maybe it is a days payable outstanding which measures the number of days between when a supplier performed a supply chain task and when it was uh, paid uh, similarly average purchase price which is uh, the average price at which the goods or uh, service was purchased during the year then uh, range of purchase price which measures the fluctuation in purchases uh, no purchase price during the specified uh, no period uh, so here the goal is to identify if the quantity of you uh, know purchased uh, correlated with the price or not and then uh, average purchase quantity which measures the average amount of purchased per order uh, like that uh, we have fraction on time deliveries which measures the fraction of deliveries from the supplier that were on time then uh, supply chain uh, you know supply sorry supply not supply, uh, supply quality which measures the quality of uh, product supply then uh, supplied uh, lead time which measures the average time between uh, when the order is placed and uh, product arrives so uh, these are the few uh, sourcing related uh, matrix uh, which definitely influence the supply chain performance. So these are the uh, different types of drivers that we have discussed, and uh, next uh, we can think of uh, uh, the next uh, in in some textbooks uh, even uh, pricing is also one of the you know they have mentioned as pricing as one of the drivers of uh, you know, supply chain uh, measuring uh, performance method. Uh, so let us discuss about uh, this uh, pricing and uh, you know role of this pricing in uh, supply chain. Uh, actually, uh, pricing uh, is the process uh, by which a company decides how much to charge customers for its goods and services. Uh, pricing affects the customer segments uh, that choose to buy the product uh, as well as uh, the customers expectations uh, this directly affects the supply chain in terms of uh, level of responsiveness required as well as uh, demand profiles that the supply chain attempts to serve uh, you know, uh, pricing is also a, a, a lever that can be used to match supply and uh, demand uh, short term discounts can be used to eliminate supply you know, surpluses or decrease the seasonal demands uh, by moving some of the demand forward uh, you know, techniques. In short, you know, pricing is one of the most uh, significant factors uh, that affect uh, the level and uh, type of demand uh, that supply chain will uh, face. So, if you look at the role in the you know uh, role of this pricing in the competitive strategy, pricing is a significant you know attribute uh, through which uh, a company executes its competitive strategy. For example, uh, you know a company called Costco, uh, it is a you know membership based wholesaler in uh, United States, has a policy that uh, the prices are kept steady but low. Customers uh, expect low prices but are comfortable with a lower level of product availability. Uh, the steady uh, prices also ensure that demand stays relatively stable. Uh, this Costco uh, serves a well-defined uh, you know, market segment and it can uh, thus design an appropriate supply chain. Uh, the, actually, the Costco supply chain aims to be very efficient uh at the expense of some responsiveness in contrast some manufacturing and uh, you know transportation f you know companies use pricing that uh, varies with response time desired by the customer uh, though they are pricing uh, you know uh, you know using this pricing uh, these uh, companies actually target uh, you know 
broader set of customers uh, some of whom need responsiveness while uh, other needs efficiency so in that case it becomes important for you know these companies to structure a supply chain uh, that can meet the uh, two divergent you know uh, needs uh, so yeah, so at this moment i have to give you the example of amazon actually amazon offers its customer a large menu of prices uh, for products uh, that are purchased from the company for example uh, in uh, in uh, you know uh, suppose say a person purchasing two books worth of uh, uh, say thirty dollars could be uh, could use uh, standard uh, shipping you know that is uh, three to five shipping within three to five business days at a cost of uh, four dollars okay uh, so at the same time uh, for shipping in two business days at the cost of eleven that means uh, if you want you know uh, uh early shipments then uh, the cost will be high okay uh, so for one day shipping again cost will be 20 dollars so like that uh, so uh, a pers the person purchasing two books worth of 30 dollars uh, may require to pay uh, you know additional charges uh, based on the uh, standard shipping you know that is uh, uh, shipping days uh, so this pricing menu uh, actually in amazon that uh, allows uh, you know actually makes amazon to attract the customers with uh, you know varying you know level of uh, desired responsiveness uh, uh, actually uh, customers paying for one day shipping impose a very high degree of uncertainty on amazon uh you know, as customer opting for free shipping can be used to you know level out the workload at the warehouse over time uh, so uh, amazon can thus uh, use its pricing to provide a responsiveness to those who value it while using uh, those who want to lower the price to help uh, it improve its efficiency okay uh, so if you look at the you know uh, component of uh, pricing decisions uh, the first component can be pricing and uh, economies of scale okay uh, most supply chain activities uh, display economies of scale uh, changeovers uh, make small production uh, you know uh, runs more expensive per unit you know than large production runs uh, loading and unloading cost make it uh, cheaper to deliver it uh, you know it a truckload to one location than uh, you know four locations in each case uh, the provider of the supply chain activity must decide how to uh, price it appropriately to reflect these economies of scale uh, uh, the commonly used approach is to offer uh, quantity discounts uh, it, it, actually a care must be taken to ensure that uh, the quantity discounts offered are consistent with the economies of scale in the in the underlying process otherwise there is a danger of uh, customer orders being uh, driven primarily uh, by the quantity discounts even though the underlying process does not have uh, significant economies of scale uh, then uh, coming to um, uh, fixed price versus uh, you know menu pricing actually a company must decide whether it will charge a fixed price for the supply chain activity or have a menu with prices that vary with some other attributes such as uh, response time or location of delivery like that if uh, marginal supply chain cost uh, or the value to the customer vary significantly along some attribute it is often effective to have a pricing menu okay uh, so uh, we already discussed about you know uh, amazon on ex ex example of amazon uh, uh, 
offering a menu that is somewhat uh, consistent with the cost of providing the particular supply chain service. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, pricing. Uh, next, let us understand. Uh, you know, uh, pricing uh, related uh, matrix, uh, which uh, you know influence the supply chain performance. So number one, it is the profit margin, which measures profit as percentage of revenue. Uh, a firm needs to examine a wide variety of uh, profit margin matrix to optimize its pricing, which including uh, no, uh, dimensions such as type of uh, margin, gross, net, etc. And uh, you uh, know and and customer types and uh, you know different other types of uh, you know uh, products and then uh, uh, next component or uh, next matrix may be uh, you know uh, that is a days of sales uh, outstanding which measures the average time between when the sale is made and when the cash is collected Similarly, uh, you can think of uh, incremental fixed cost per order, which measures uh, incremental cost that are independent of the size of the order. These include uh, changeover costs at a manufacturing plant or order processing or transportation cost that are incurred independent of shipment size at a mail order form. Uh, then uh, average order size, uh, which measures the average quantity per order. The average sales price, order size, incremental fixed cost per order, and uh, incremental variable cost per unit. Uh, this help uh, to estimate the contribution from performing supply chain activity. Uh, so then, uh, uh, so range of sale price, which measures the maximum and minimum of sale price per unit over a specified uh, you know time. <coughs> So these are the uh, few, you know, uh, uh, matrix which uh, affects the performance. So uh, with this, we have completed all the, you know, six different drivers, uh, which uh, definitely uh, can be used to measure the uh, supply chain performance. Okay. So with this, uh, we will uh, uh, wind up this uh, session here itself and uh, thank you one and all.